So this video is going to be about the t distribution. Specifically, it's going to be about when and why, not so much what. The t distribution is used when estimating a mean, but we don't know the population standard deviation. That is to say, the t distribution is theoretically used all the time, since we're often estimating a mean, and if we don't know the mean, there's very little chance that we know the population standard deviation. So basically, anytime we're estimating a mean, we are implicitly using the t distribution somewhere. Now, the way we've done things is used the bootstrap method to estimate the sampling distribution of the sample mean. But technically, We don't need the bootstrap to estimate the sampling distribution of the sample mean. Mathematicians, statisticians, whatever, have worked out a long time ago the sampling distribution of the sample mean when the standard deviation is unknown. And the answer to that is this distribution, the t-distribution. So for the last few minutes of this video, let's just dive into R and see if we can explain or show, really more show, what I mean by saying the bootstrap method is estimating the known standard deviation of the sample mean. So in R, let's just generate a relatively large data set from the normal distribution. Let's see, that helps, I think, a little bit better. Um, from the normal distribution with a known standard deviation of five, but we'll pretend like we don't know it as we move forward here. So it turns out the standard error is the name for the standard deviation of the sample mean. And you can calculate it in this case very simply as the standard deviation, at least an estimate of it, of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. That is just a representation of the standard deviation of the sampling distribution for the sample mean. Okay, so there we have it. We didn't need any bootstrap to do that at all. But let's just show that the bootstrap is a reasonable uh, tool to estimate that standard deviation. So if we just applied the bootstrap method to our function boot mean on the data set x, and let's say a thousand and well, let's say a thousand and three times, just so you know that this thousand and three is different than the number of observations we have. And then if you just look at the standard deviation of your bootstrap estimates of the mean, what we get out is a really good estimate of the mathematically defined standard error. We get out a really good estimate of the mathematically defined standard error using the bootstrap method. So here highlighted is our bootstrap estimate of the standard deviation of the sample mean. And here is using the technical name for it, standard error, the actual calculation for the uh, standard deviation of the sample mean. So in fact, uh, this is all the bootstrap method is really doing for us. In my opinion, the bootstrap method helps us estimate this quantity in scenarios much more difficult to calculate analytically the standard error. So the bootstrap method is just kind of this one size fits all, fits a lot approach to estimating standard errors. Now, if we wanted to carry this example further on, which we might as well do, because this has been a relatively quick video, is I could show you the normal strategy to calculate um, confidence intervals based on the standard error calculation. So for instance, we could do a confidence interval of, let's see, that's 90% for the population mean 
which because we generated the data, we know the population mean to be zero. And indeed here, this 90% confidence interval captures the true population mean. And this is the way you'd go if all you were gonna use was this standard error. Now, maybe technically we should have put the uh, T distribution here, but that's gonna be a little bit too complicated because I'm just gonna show you in a second way that the way we have done things allows us to estimate these uh, confidence intervals using the bootstrap method the same way as the bootstrap method estimates the standard deviation of the sample mean as we showed earlier. So here it is. Negative 0.28 is pretty reasonable to be estimated with negative 0.3. And positive 0.24 is pretty reasonably estimated of positive 0.236. So you can see here our bootstrap confidence interval is once again a reasonable estimate of things we could have worked out uh, by hand mathematically first and done. But this bootstrap procedure, I think once you get the hang of it, is really just kind of uh, quick and simple a quick and simple way to estimate um, characteristics of the sampling distribution of whatever function you might be interested in.